human instinct is very controversial. Uh, actually, the whole subject is controversial because the notion of evolutionary biology is one that biologists struggle over with, particularly classical biologists who don't really believe that we have been, if you like, shaped mentally by evolution, purely physically. My contention is that, in fact, since the very earliest days of brain development, things are laid down in the brain which change our behavior as a result of evolution, as a result of experience. So, for example, um, one of the things I'll be saying today is that within a fraction of a second, a few milliseconds, we identify a face and decide whether we trust it or not. And that would have been essential at a time uh, when we might be confronted by an animal that might be ready to pounce. And of course, humans on the savannah would be weaker than any animal that was a predator that they might face. And so my whole premise really is that so much of our behavior has been shaped evolutionarily. And as a result, if we look at those pressures and we look at those mechanisms, we can understand how we can modify our behavior to be more successful. I mean, gut feeling is very difficult to describe. Uh, and means different things to different people. Certainly neuroscientists look at risk-taking, for example, uh, which is part of gut feeling. And that is now capable of being measured, in fact. In fact, my son, Joel Winston, whose other work I'm going to refer to in this lecture, um, is actually looking at that currently. He's looking actually at gut feeling and how that dictates what we do. I certainly wouldn't advocate relying on gut feeling. I think it'd be very dangerous for me to suggest that. I mean, you know, um, I think you have to take a business decision primarily on a rational basis. And if you don't, you run the risk of litigation because, you know, clearly in a court of law, you have to justify the action you've taken as you do to your shareholders and the other members of your board. On the other hand, I have no doubt that instinctual reaction to something is really important. I'm not going to remotely be presumptuous enough to suggest to business people that they shouldn't or they should use gut feeling. But what I'm going to look at is some of the mechanisms whereby you might come to those decisions. So, for example, even how somebody smells, for example, their body language, uh, whether they're lying or not, those sorts of things are interesting. I think all of us, if we're honest, are not objective in science. I mean, we pretend that we're objective, but actually, you know, I've published, I don't know what, over 300 scientific publications, and none of those really were based in anything other than on an idea of the sort of result I might be likely to get and what one would be doing would be expecting to get that result. Now that influences how you do the experiment, often very disastrously. You know, one has to be very cautious about sometimes interpreting what you've done because you can actually influence the result by thinking of the result you're intending to get. That's a real problem for scientists. And I think it's as much a problem in science as it is in business. The only difference is that we generally don't lose heaps of money in following our gut instinct.